I talked about the brain shrinking. And here we have pictures of it. It's kind of sad. On the top, we have a brain. And then to the right, we have a shrunken brain. We have a normal brain on the bottom left. This is a PET scan showing glucose activity. Glucose is the preferred nutrient for the brain. It's the energy source for the brain. The brain craves it. And we all know this because when we have low blood sugar in the brain, of course, we don't think very clearly. Uh, when blood sugar is good, it's better. We know in the clinic when neuropsychological testing is going on, we encourage people very strongly to have a good meal before they come in. Because if they come in without eating breakfast in the morning, their test scores are lower than if they come in after eating something. And that can be a false indication of progression. So basically what we want is our brains to look like the ones on the left and not move to the ones on the right. What is it that kills off these millions of brain cells? It's oxidation. And there's two ways to deal with this. One, keep away from things that oxidize the brain, such as oxysterols from cholesterol, saturated fats, and other inflammatory substances. And two, take in as much antioxidants as you can to protect your brain and, of course, all your other parts of your body. Uh, this was a very nice study that just came out. Uh, it's uh, 2021. It's from the Singapore Chinese study. And it was uh, really nicely done. They followed people for 20 years. And they looked at the people who had better vitamin C. And they had 14% better memory and cognition. Isn't that amazing? Just having more vitamin C. And they looked at people with vitamin E, 17% better cognition. They checked each carotenoid separately, but in summary, 12% better cognition. And then the flavonoids, which are one of the polyphenols that are very anti-inflammatory and antioxidant, they found that 23% better. So if you add all these things up, you're gonna see that you can protect your brain and protect your memory and your thinking abilities quite powerfully. This is a 2021 study in the Journal of Gerontology, very well done study, and I'm, I'm glad that I have this information. What are the antioxidants? Carotenoids are the colorful pigments in fruits and vegetables, or if they're green, they also have carotenoids, which is hidden by the chlorophyll. Vitamin C, of course, is found in fruits and vegetables, vitamin E in the natural forms, and polyphenols. Now, what's similar about these four sources? They're from plants. Whole plant foods have the most antioxidants and animal foods have the least antioxidants and of course create oxidation as well. We also have our own internal antioxidants. These internal antioxidants are able to protect us very powerfully but only if they have the minerals that activate the enzymes. So one of the enzymes that we need is superoxide dismutase, and that needs zinc, copper, and manganese. Another is glutathione peroxidase, and that needs selenium. If we are low in these minerals, they don't work. We also depend on coenzyme Q10, which is made in our body, and catalase, also made in our body as antioxidants. And that's the difference between the big brain and the little brain. Now, I like to analyze diets. And here are a series of diets that you can look at. Uh, if the number is in red, it means it's inadequate. You notice in the right column, the vitamin E column, well, all but two are inadequate in vitamin E, which is not surprising. Consider that vitamin E is deficient in 93% of American diets. This is also true in Europe and other places. Americans just don't get enough. Look at all those red numbers. And what was the worst was, well, the McDougal diet because it's a very low fat diet and vitamin E occurs in fatty foods. Although the Atkins diet, the standard American diet were very low in vitamin E. Vitamin C, the worst diet was the Atkins diet, and the best diet was the raw vegan diet, also the winner for vitamin E because of the nuts and seeds that were eaten on this diet. Some of the diets like uh, the, the paleo diet includes vegetables and fruits, which is a good thing. But as we saw, you don't really want your brain degenerating or your bones degenerating. And so that's not so good. Also, 
you may notice that the transition vegetarian diet, now this diet is where people are eating eggs and cheese and white noodles and the diet actually is not much better from a saturated fat standpoint than an American diet, nor is it better from a vitamin C and vitamin E standpoint. I think that analyzing diets is a very good thing to do. I am disappointed by how few doctors who will speak even at this wonderful convention are actually analyzing diets and seeing which ones are the best, which ones have the things we need and which ones don't, and which ones have too much, the things we don't want too much. So we wanna reduce the risk of Alzheimer's disease. Uh, this study was in the Annals of Pharmacotherapy and they reduced the risk of Alzheimer's disease 40%. 5,000 older people were followed for 11 years. Those who took vitamin C and vitamin E supplements reduced their risk of Alzheimer's disease and dementia by 40%. This includes the uh, use of multivitamins. The vitamins reduce neuronal damage and brain cell death caused by oxidative stress. This picture of brain and body food you see on the bottom right is what I made so that people could get most of the nutrients that we used in the Hawaii Dementia Prevention Trial. And you can easily see which ones we couldn't stuff in there, but it really seems to help a lot. I certainly take it to keep my brain sharp. Reading all these studies, I need a sharp. Now in this is it called a meta-analysis and it's called the forest graph. As you can see that just about all of the studies show that less vitamin C impaired the memory and increased Alzheimer's disease. So you definitely need vitamin C. How to do it? Eat fruits and vegetables. That's the best way. However, when I analyze diets, which I love to do, even on the best diet, I rarely see over three or 400 milligrams of vitamin C, whereas the optimal amount of vitamin C is more like 1200 milligrams. This is why I supplement with the brain and body food to bring my diet up to the 1200 milligrams so that I have the amount that would, is needed. You see, humans are one of the very few animals, three animals that don't make their own vitamin C. So we need to take it in our diet. But if you look at those animals that do make vitamin C and calculate up how much they make, adjust for human body weight, you get about, well, 1,200 to <laughs> 2,000 milligrams of vitamin C per day would be the uh, required amount for optimal health for humans. By the way, vitamin C is also very helpful for age-related loss of immune function, which is crucial in the COVID pandemic. Vitamin C supplements in this study improve thinking and memory. And, and what was interesting is that this study looked at plasma. They didn't depend on people's memory of when they took vitamin C or how much they took. They looked in the blood and found out how much they had. The dementia group was three times more likely to have low plasma vitamin C levels. So in the Hawaii Dementia Prevention Trial, we supplied 800 milligrams of vitamin C daily. And that's the amount also in the brain and body food that I take daily. Um, Frontiers in Aging Neuroscience 2019 study backs up this uh, three times more likely to have low plasma vitamin C in a dementia group. I wanna talk about coenzyme Q10. It's known as ubiquinone or ubiquinol because it's ubiquitous. All of our cells make it. They may make less with time and age. And if you're taking statin drugs, the coenzyme Q10 reduces our ability to make coenzyme Q10 by about 40%. If you do need to take statin drugs for a period of time until you can adjust your diet to lower your blood cholesterol, it would probably be a good idea, and please ask your doctor if you should take coenzyme Q10 along with it. But it's very difficult for dietary, supplementary coenzyme Q10 to get all the way into the insides of the mitochondria where it's needed. So it's really best if you can make it yourself and not interfere with that making by taking statins, more technically known as hydroxymethylglutaryl coenzyme A reductase inhibitors. Coenzyme Q10 is a potential to improve brain function in healthy elderly populations. That's good. I'm a healthy elderly population. Coenzyme Q10 improves energy production. It's required for aerobic energy production in the cells. 
Uh, that's from another 2019 study. Now, supplementary coenzyme Q10 reduce amyloid beta in brain blood vessels and reduce oxidation of death of brain neurons. It can be reduce vascular dementia that is triggered by amyloid beta. So in our trial, we did supply coenzyme Q10 daily. In my book shown here, Nutrients for Memory, I outline how much we used and what form we used. With coenzyme Q10, it's important to use the ubiquinol form, not the ubiquinone form. Excuse me, it's called ubiquinone, but I, I say ubiquinone because I try to take none of it. It's just a memory tool. Okay, let's look at our built-in antioxidants. We have superoxide dismutase. I mentioned that we need copper, zinc, and manganese. Well, zinc was found to be low in Alzheimer's disease. Why? Because it's all used up and there's not enough in the diet. Also, selenium was found to be low and that's needed for glutathione peroxidase. We supplied manganese, zinc, copper, and selenium in the Hawaii Dementia Prevention Trial. Of course, I put it in the brain and body food, and I want my and your protective antioxidant enzymes to protect our brains, and they can't do it without these minerals. So it's something that seems to be missed somehow by many researchers in the field, although it's backed up by this study in the European Biochemical Society 2018 and hundreds of others. There's no doubt at all that these minerals are needed and there's no doubt that they're low in Alzheimer's disease. <music>